Hi, welcome to Give Me a Word, where we take a deep dive into God's Word and make some discoveries that hopefully will help strengthen us in life. Um, in a previous edition of Give Me a Word, we looked at a passage of Scripture, Luke 17, 3. Oh, it's a fun passage, sure. It says, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. I share with you that the way to do this and do this right, if you're going to be biblical and do what the passage says, is to make sure you do the first part. <laughs> Take heed to yourselves. And if you missed that edition, oh, it had to be award-winning by now. So um, make sure you go back and you review that. It's available here on our streaming service, and it's, you can um, watch it on demand. But Jesus continues the instruction after he says, take heed to yourself. He uses the word, if your brother trespasses against you. Um, the word trespass means to violate. It means to cross a line. In the context of the verse, it refers to crossing a line with um, words or actions that leaves the other person feeling hurt um, and, and, and pressed upon. When we perceive that someone trespasses against us, and that's how um, the King James always kind of refers to um, someone sinning against you, trespass, and when you say it out loud, it sounds like a lot of S words <laughs> all coming together. Um, but when someone does that, you have to respond. And the Bible says that you are to rebuke such a person. Now again, I know that we're looking at this in King James, and so we kind of get excited about that because we tend to like that word rebuke because we, we think, well, if someone hurts me, I'm going to rebuke them. And Jesus gave you the green light, so rebuke away. <laughs> However, the problem with that is that in English, this word sounds very strong and very harsh. The problem with that is in the original Greek, the tone is much softer. As a matter of fact, the word rebuke is a Greek word that describes a very frank but gentle and polite way of telling the person that they've done something that you perceive to be wrong. Notice what I said, the definition of that word matters here. It means that you are in a very frank and gentle way saying to them that they've done something that you perceive to be wrong. In other words, you're not even accusing them of doing something wrong. You're simply and gently suggesting to them that you've heard something and you perceive it to be something that is offensive that has crossed the line. It's a lot more fun to go, rebuke! <laughs> but when you know what the word means, it takes all the heat off of it. And it's a much softer word. In other words, the confrontation, it ain't got to be ugly. But yet there's something about that word rebuke that we think we get a green light to let the ugliness out and go for it. That's not what Jesus is saying. The confrontation can be nicer. It can be gentler. It can be done from a place of love. And if you do it well, the conversation might just lead you to a healing moment and a healing experience. You're basically saying, my feelings are hurt, and I recognize that I might have misconstrued this, I might have messed up what you intended here, but I want you to tell you about it and ask you if this is really what you meant to say and how you made me feel. When you ask someone in that way, the person often can express regret for his actions and ask for forgiveness. Sometimes that works out that way, and then sometimes they go, no, you perceived exactly what I meant. I meant it, and I meant it to hurt you, and I hope it hurt a lot. Then you can really rebuke them. But actually, that's not what happens either, because then you move into a different kind of arena, because then Jesus talks about the fact that you have to forgive them. If they repent, they're easy to forgive, right? Because if they say they're sorry, then you just have to say, okay, and you forget it and you go on and you never mention it again because when you forgive, you let it go. But it also means, because Jesus talks about forgiveness in other portions of Scripture, that we understand that that word forgiveness is so big and it sets you apart because when you're a person of faith, you are supposed to learn in your life and practice forgiving others because you have been so freely forgiven. Not always easy to do, especially if the person that you're trying to forgive doesn't want to be forgiven. They don't give you the satisfaction of a good forgiveness, now do they? But yet, in your life, you discover that forgiveness is not for them. It's really for you. See, Jesus forgave you on the cross. 
He paid the price for your sins, and you get to live forgiven, and as a result, you can forgive others. Jesus forgave you, and He did it for you. And then He gives you the ability to forgive for you, because it makes you more in line with the person that you were created to be, and it allows you to live life more like Him, not holding that grudge, not holding that thing against someone else. And so Jesus takes a little bit of time to explain something that sometimes is very tricky in relationships, that if we could ever learn it, we would find that we, for our part, would make relationships work much, much better. That's what the Word says. And so, now that we've dug into it, comes the hard part. We have to live it. So good luck with that. I'll pray for you. You can pray for me. And I'll join you again next time here and give me a word.